Hello and welcome to another episode of Tech Fanatic Official, your honest guide to the cryptoverse. Today I'm going to talk about Ovali, or you can read it as Oval 3. It's basically a fusion for gaming and also Game 5 projects uh, that's like a fantasy gaming for rugby and has NFT and blockchain concepts in it. So basically it's an online fantasy game that uses Web3 technology for players to build teams with real players that they compete against each other in their leagues and it's based on real performance of the players in real life. And it's developed by BMG Sports, which is a Web2 fantasy game with over 50,000 users and it's already live. And it's associated with the rugby players like Antoine Dupont, uh, who's a very famous uh, French rugby player and many other players in US and the French national team. Now, what makes it unique is the ability to bring the digital rugby entertainment into the Web3. Rugby is a, one of the very biggest sports um, for those who are uh, following it. And they have exclusive rights, exclusive partnerships, especially with French and American clubs and national team. And they're going to bring in more to the UK, Australia and other companies as well. So this is, um, I guess, one of the main points about the project that makes it different. Um, and I'm going to cover it basically in ChangeGPT and DAOMaker pad as the best launch pads that are launching the project. So that's pretty much the concept that you can um, go ahead with and the unique selling points and the highlights are 2,000 players, 43 clubs and three championship. They have world's best players, uh, have many experience in the gaming space as well as the rugby market. And they have the technical expertise and the platform is again already live and, and getting traction. I think they have been on since April. For the game, I'm not going to go through the game itself, you know, if you want to play a fantasy game, go to, go to their website and play it. But they have been live since April and they actually have 50,000 daily uh, active users. And um, then they've made $500,000 just from the sale of NFTs. So, you know, it's it's a pretty massive model that they have. And when you jump to their business models and revenue stream, you know, um, it's from the player card auctions, tournament fees, secondary market fees the white label solution that they're going to produce, uh, the brand media partnerships and the booster card pre-sale. So that's sort of the unique models that they have. So they have these player cards, they have the resource cards, and then they have the booster cards that you can uh, choose after you choose a competition. So you choose a competition, then there are many of them per week. You choose the pack and then you get a ranking based on the ranking, you get a reward basically. So it's sort of an immersive gaming and uh, competition with other people so like they call it the next level fantasy game but they also have the so the one mode is the fantasy game that you pick five modes against others as a multiplayer the other mode they have is the pvp so it's more of a head-to-head -head matchup if you played the soccer or football one this is similar with this one in the rugby and they have virtual trainings and stuff and uh yeah they have basically it's the repeat they should fix that um uh, of that so that's that's pretty much uh the if you're very interested in the technology by the way you can check it out uh on their websites i'm not a you know developer so i'm not gonna go through it because that's beyond the scope of this sort of uh session and how does it work i just already mentioned how it's gonna work and and uh all of those now the next part is something i'm interested to cover is the roadmap now let's see if they have a better yeah. so the roadmap yes in 2023 they uh, will list on exchange as well as uniswap on the 20th of december which i'm going to talk about later and then more exchanges in jan and feb they're going to have the rarity and rewards mode they have advanced negotiations with more rugby teams as i said uh, from different countries like australia and new zealand obviously best countries for rugby and new features for the ecosystem to bring, I guess, more changes. So in December, did the proof of concept and um, April 23 marketplace was launched, as I've mentioned, and they sold a lot of NFTs. And then the Binance partnership happened in June 23, August, they did the beta version of early adapters, game launched September. Then they did the Rugby World Cup and during the World Cup, they get free tickets and everything for people who played the game. And now they're gonna do the listing. So. Uh, pretty cool and unique, I guess, uh, timeline and long-term mission they have is to bring the uh, women rugby as well, get all the clubs licensed in the world from what they have right now and then get a revenue of 100 million plus um, after that. Now, tokenomics, token utility and revenue. 
the token utility itself, it's the token to be used, which is OVL3. It's a token to be used for buying NFT cards. It's replacing the Matic. Because right now, if you go to the game, you have to use Matic as the you know chain gas fee as well as the trading token. That will be replaced when the token listing happens to OVL3. So suddenly everyone needs to shift into it and bring a lot of buying pressure. So in the last seven months, Half a million dollar has been used in Matic or 600,000 Matics to be used in the game. That will change. So average selling of 70,000 cars per month will switch into Oval 3 token. So that's going to bring a lot of utility there. Token buyback, obviously, from advertising on Oval 3 with French companies like Canal Plus, Range Rover, and many others. Uh, the 30% of this will be used to buy back the token. Token burning as well is another one for people who do the exclusive registrations and VIP experiences, they're going to bring that back and uh, use for token burn utility for clubs, allowing purchase of the uh, items in the official shop, discounts, buying food and things like that. Then they've got a DAO as well for token holders that they can actively participate in the decision-making related to the project, obviously stake to earn as well. And then they have the fan token uh, for, for people who are the fan. And then uh, there is, like a video here, you can see when they had the meetings with the fans and players in uh, Toulouse in France. So that's some of the utility in here. So buying player cards, selling cards on the market, governance and DAO. Uh, and these are the cards, play cards, NFTs, booster cards, votes, and then playing competitions, ecosystem, fan experience, fan token, club match, and then price support will be buying back as well as in-game burning. So now in terms of the sales that they had um, jumping into the tokenomics, I like to use the DAO maker one usually for these. Let's go and see the token metrics. So in terms of tokenomics, uh, first you need to see the overall. The token ticker is OVL3, 1 billion token valuation is $30 million. The initial market cap is around three, 400K, but with liquidity is 700. And they've raised a total of 2.625 million. Platform uh, raise doesn't matter. And then you jump into the metrics and unlock schedule. So 35% is for community incentive, 15% marketing, 12% team. Seed round did 9.4%. And uh, pre sale is 6.8. Launch band 3%. And airdrop 1.2. Now, for seed, they bought it at 0075 cents, which is uh, three to four times cheaper than the launch pad, but they have six months cliff. And then vesting schedule for 24 months. So public has a better deal. They have basically over 50% of public token will be unlocked by that time. Presale is uh, after price, also three months cliff, and then vesting for 18 months. Then they've got the launch pads. For the launch pads, they have a token uh, of 20% uh, unlock and then linear vesting for nine months. So you can see more detail if you want here, basically on circulating supply, listing price, and uh, market cap, how it works. So that's seed, pre sale, launch pad. Team has 12 months cliff, advisory has six months cliff, community three months cliff, marketing is just vesting 48 months, reserve has 12 months cliff. Liquidity 30%, 33% release at TGE, and then the rest is going for vesting. So the market cap you see, as I said, um, you can remove, I mean, actually, you can see the TGE market cap is 6 million from Launchpad, and then 4 million. So they want 6 million from Launchpad, and then 4 million from, uh, from the uh, liquidity at a price of point, 0 0.3 uh, cents. That's uh, t 10 billion at 0 0.3 cent. That's actually 300K, but they're going to add more, I guess. So I would say the market cap is actually lower uh, considering what they're showing because 10 million by 0 0.3 is 300 million. Um, now, maybe they've increased the raise, but uh, yeah, you, you're looking at around 300K for the initial market cap, basically, for the project. Um, you could probably see some more info here as well. Yeah, so that's the initial market cap. 300 to 400k. Um, I would say 400k for the initial market cap. Now, jumping into team, 
partners and uh, main investor. So um, maybe I'll go here. In terms of team, they've got uh, Tony Bogua, who is the CEO of the team and has experience in the rugby space. They've got Florian, who's the market analysis, the CTO and Quentin and uh, Florian again, who are the licensing uh, people. And then they've got uh, some people from shareholders, Antoine Dupont, captain of the French national team and the best player in the world. So they actually have a lot of investors from the rugby. So that means they're going to get a lot of advertisements from them for the token. And they have several players like Paul Lasik, Sofian and Giton, as well as ambassadors. And then they have uh, uh, KOLs, especially French ones, uh, American French rugby leagues as well. So they've got a huge number of rugby people um, involved. And then if you come here, uh, one of the main people who have been involved uh, here, trying to find it in the summary, I think it's uh, Lead VC, Interval Capital, French Capital, and then Market Maker Flowdesk. So quite um, strong partnerships with uh, the French people and French companies in Web3 as well as Rugby. Uh, now, in terms of the IDO and social, Let's jump to the socials first. They've got uh, 40,000 40, numbers in Twitter. And if you see, it's quite an active uh, uh, number of people and it's actually genuine. And uh, they're quite engaging actually in terms of how they're running it. Then they've got a Discord as well of uh, 7,000 members. They don't really do Telegram. And uh, if you go to their marketing strategy as well, um, the marketing strategy is they sell sold 25k NFTs to more than 10,000 uh, users and 55 so 10,000 web3 55,000 web2 users and token will be the direct utility airdrop there's airdrop that they've done a big campaign planned after 3 months and they have community in french and national uh, english speaking communities especially who are uh, KOLs as well as rugby players and rugby people and they have a lot of uh, partnership with the clubs basically so mainstream these you know newspapers and articles sports a lot of news channels and rugby teams in web3 french especially crypto companies and then the international companies so they are quite um, active in that space as well now in terms of ido they're doing ido on uh DAO maker of course uh chain gpt pools red kite now, I'll just go through the idea on DAOMaker and uh, ChainGPT because those are the ones that are still possible to join. So in order to join the DAOMaker IDO, you come here and uh, you, you have to stake around 2,000 DAOMaker tokens as a minimum. Stake the token on the platform, do your KYC, and once you join, click here, participate. It's a Fusion uh, model, Fusion SHO, so it means people participate. And if it goes overflow, people uh, will be able to um, get the amount based on the overflow. So if they, for example, they're raising around four hundred fifty thousand dollars, five hundred thousand um, dollars. If it goes to one million people invested, you get half of your allocation. So that's the sort of allocation. But because the raise is quite big for this one, I reckon people will get a good allocation in different tiers. For Chain GPT Pad, the the raise is small because I think they joined last minute. So it's an exclusive IDO for only diamond tier. Bad news for other tiers. Good news for diamond, meaning that they're going to get a very decent allocation. So they're going to uh, register interest. The registration of interest finishes on the 18th of December at 9 p.m. And then IDO will start two hours after that at 11 p.m. This is, uh, by the way, Australian time. So if I convert it to, uh, let's say, UTC time, that's 10 a.m. UTC, 18 December, registration ends. Swap starts uh, 12 UTC, 12 noon UTC, 18 December. And then first come, first sale will happen after 24 hours for all the other tiers. Very important note, the token will be on Polygon and contribution will be on Polygon and USDT as the currency to do the change. So that's how you can join the IDOs as well. Now, in terms of how the token will perform, I cannot comment, but all I can say is that uh, they will 
they have popularity. I think I wouldn't say it's going to do super well. Listing is on the 20th, by the way, on Polygon Uniswap, as well as one of the exchanges that's in BitGet. So they, I'm not going to say they're going to do amazingly well, to be honest. You have an optional refund for seven days. So if you don't like it, you can use it. But it's a long-term project because they've got so many players involved and they do monthly revenue and buyback. It's one of those tokens that I would, even if it dumps, you would better, if you're, if you, even if you don't join the IDO, maybe you could buy a small amount, you know, free market or something and see how it goes. Um, because it's a long-term sort of revenue sharing, the game is live, the model is very simple, and there's no competitor for rugby in the space. So um, no financial advice to your own research. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please make sure you like, subscribe to the channel. Uh, put your comments down in my video so I know what you have any questions. I can reach out to the team. And I really hope that you enjoyed this video and had a good weekend and see you next time. Goodbye.